A turning to Bloomberg West, where we dig into all things tech and media. We are focused uh, this morning on Netflix. It is out of its subscriber rut and renewing growth, all thanks to a boost in its original and licensed content. But it's the cost of that content that could eventually cripple Netflix. Ahead, ahead of today's earnings report, I want to bring in our Bloomberg Industries analyst on media, Paul Sweeney, and also Bloomberg's Gigi Stone. But Gigi, let's start with you. Netflix is really stuck uh, between a rock and a hard place when it comes to growth. Right, Betty, that's true. Netflix is really bracing the market for some red ink right now. Take a look. In its revised forecast, Netflix predicted the U.S. video streaming service would end the year with 27 million subscribers. That's a gain of about 5.4 million customers from the beginning of the year. Netflix likely to have added 2 million U.S. web subscribers in the fourth quarter. Now, as for the rock and the hard place, Netflix is facing the challenge of how to continue to grow without letting the cost of content really balloon. You remember last month it announced starting in 2016 it will have the rights to show Disney movies shortly after they come out in theaters. Well, most investors really reacted enthusiastically, but some analysts are worried about Netflix's ability to foot the bill without raising its prices. Remember that customer backlash, of course, that happened in 2011 when Netflix started charging separately for internet streaming and DVDs, Betty. Right, and that was uh, an investor and a consumer uproar there. Now, sentiment, uh, Gigi, has been turning in the favor of Netflix, right? It's true, Betty. It's really been getting some high-profile support lately. It, you know, still a far cry from their $270 peak in the summer of 2011, but Netflix shares have doubled since September to around $100, and most of the move might have been based on a shift in sentiment. Activist investor Carl Icahn took a near 10% stake in the company and vowed to see it sold. Then you have Janie Montgomery Scott analyst uh, Tony Weibel. He made headlines last week when he turned positive on the stock after being a critic for so many years. And Weibel says that he really thinks the deal with Disney might be used to facilitate deals with other content providers, including perhaps Sony. And that could be big, Betty. Okay, that's very interesting. It's all about content for Netflix. Gigi, thank you so much. I want to bring in now Bloomberg Industries media analyst uh, Paul Sweeney. And Paul, would you agree with that analysis that basically Netflix is kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place because they need that content to grow? They, they, they sure do. It's all about content. And there's a lot of competition out there. Netflix has to compete against not just the, all the cable networks out there like HBO and Showtime, but also Hulu and Amazon Prime and now Verizon and Coinstar getting into the business yes. as well. So it's become very competitive. Uh, and really where you see the competitive nature of this business is in the cost of programming. So mm -hmm. they and that's to, only going to keep going up. That, that's exact, exactly right. And so the challenge for Netflix is to grow its subscriber base, you know, uh, you know, continue to grow it very, very quickly so that they can generate the revenue to offset and to pay these programming because liabilities. Because right now they kind of, you know, they basically have, they were first in the business, so they kind of have that lead and they're just trying yep. to keep that lead ahead of the competitors. Is that right? Right. They, I mean, I always argue that they have two real valuable aspects to, to, to the Netflix story. One is they are first to market, and second is they have a great brand name in the marketplace. Yeah. You know, other than that, it's really an arms race, and, and the arms we're talking about is programming, and so that really goes to who has the deepest pockets to uh, buy long-term uh, commitments to programming. So when do the cable companies, or, or, or when do the content providers, I should really say, when do they wake up and they say, we own this content and we ought to be, you know, we ought to be getting more and more money out of it and we don't have to be selling it to Netflix, we can sell it to others, we can do our own platform. Right, right. Well, we're seeing most of the, the content companies are actually being very smart this, this, this time around. I think they learned their lesson from the music industry 10 or 15 years ago, which essentially gave away their content. Here we're seeing Hollywood say, we will sell our content to the highest bidder, and they are. So there, a lot of these they companies, are doing it. yeah, absolutely, they're striking big deals. They're short-term deals, so that they don't get locked into any long-term uh, type of uh, contract with a Netflix or an Amazon, because they want to uh, they want to maintain the ability to keep marking up the price of their content, which is actually happening. So really, the big winners here, uh, as more and more channels. Uh, become developed the real winners here are the content owners uh paul the we were showing i think the stock the stock chart for netflix or, or uh, and the stock has gone up considerably particularly right. after carl icon took his uh, right. stake in this company does it have enough earnings momentum does it have enough content enough deals to keep that stock going well the, the real challenge for netflix is its international growth uh the u.s business is actually uh, profitable for them uh, but they are expanding aggressively overseas in the UK and Canada and so on. So they've actually, 
you know, that is a money losing business for them, but they have to continue to grow. They have to continue to grow their subscriber base and they have to continue to get beachheads in key markets. So, you know, it's a challenge what for them. They, what content do they, is it local content? It's both. Over, okay. It's both. It's global content that they would license from a Disney or a Time Warner, and it's also local content as well. So the, the international business is a money losing business for them. They've actually slowed down the growth of their international expansion because of the, the red ink associated with it. So it's a real challenge for them to continue to grow their subscriber base in an effort to pay for their content.